right, folks, we've made it here with the plate. And uh, like I said, I think about 2,500 pounds is what it weighs. It's not bad. I mean, not in comparison to other parts. And let me see. There is part of the uh, condenser, I guess, is what that is. And then we've got this piece, which is another probably part of the condenser, but it was rusted real bad. Anyway, but we, when it came down, it got it pretty hard on the other side, so we'll be remaking that. But I want to go back just, just like you see it, just like it is. Now, this pipe has got a big crack in it, freeze crack, and we'll probably have to replace possibly this short pipe where we pulled it out of the threads, but we can work with it. And then this pipe here has got holes in it. This was the one that, okay, this was the one that ran under and ran up to the engine. We didn't pull the threads on this, we took them out. So anyway, we got all of this. What we got left, the, the feed pump or steam pump. Uh, I always knew a steam pump as a steam operated pump and a feed pump as a hand feed pump. You know, because they made one that was hand pressure that you'd put it, put it in by hand. But, you know, they're telling me it's a feed pump. So, you know, I'm not sure the right terminology, but We'll just say feed pump or steam pump. If I say steam pump, just don't get mad at me. Uh, but uh, I'm not the greatest when it comes to words like that. But uh, anyway. All right, so every part of the engine that we know of that is in existence is right here. Uh, I have actually seen somebody that posted uh, on a board that said that they have a Bates, a Bates tag and a possibly a Bates governor. We're going to see about that. A uh, few things that I didn't know about that I, I've learned here. Uh, the trip system. Okay. I couldn't figure out did I have parts missing or did I have parts that uh, that were just different than what I was used to seeing. And because I've seen a lot of this you know, the cordless valve assemblies and stuff. But this thing is a little different than any of them. And if I can remember, I'm going to put a video in the link that one of my subscribers there had sent me. And it is of a model engine of, of one of these running. And I didn't realize, I knew something was different because the trips were gone off the end of the, the valves. There should be trips on these, on the intake valves, that would trip it and allow that dash pod at the bottom to pull it shut. Well, there was no trip there, and I was kind of worried about that. And now I know why. This has got a over-the-center mechanism. And I don't exactly know how it works, but I can see it on that model. But it's in the center. And it's my understanding, according to that video, that I don't know that there's any of these in existence. Now, of the baits because of the Bates engines like the big 350 horse at Denton, which I've actually been up there and seen, uh, it don't have this style. And it don't even have this style wrist plate. It has latches uh, or trip levers at the end of these valves. This one don't have it. So my point is, is there's something different about this engine compared to what I guess is out there. Now that guy is, I guess he's big into steam and he's saying that he don't think there was any of these that actually existed that they uh they were all gone and they all got melted down but uh of course you know a lot of people in the steam didn't know about this one anyway so i mean of course being in the woods so we'll see how it goes but uh another thing don't let what machinery you own or have or have access to or anything like that limit what you do uh you know 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I didn't have any nearly what I've got now, but I still would have moved this engine. It wasn't going to be an issue. Uh, if you think about it, uh, really the only thing that I used to move this engine or could have used is my rollback. And my rollback is a homemade rollback. So everything was moved here and winched on that particular truck. Now, that wasn't the plans going into this. The plans going into this was to go in there and lift and, and move it. But, you know, I could have easily said, well, I don't have the money to buy or to, to rent a, uh, you know, a 100-ton crane to come out there. So we're just not going to do it. That would have been the easy way out. You don't ever let anything like that stop you, 
you know, work your way around it. There's ways around, you know, all this stuff. Uh, just because you can't get it one way don't mean you can't get it another. And uh, and like I said, the the entire rollback, when I bought this truck, this International, I bought this as a U-Haul truck. I gave $1,500 for it, or I think $1,300 for it, as a cabin chassis down in Charlotte. Uh, I put a front clip on it. Now, I've got to mess on it right now because we was working hauling all this stuff. But uh, anyway, I showed a few people this tag before. Uh, they require me to have a tag with the, the manufacturer's uh, rating on it. And just for their books and stuff. So we've got a tag for the manufacturer here. And uh, it's actually manufactured in Rockport, West Virginia on Slate Creek Road where I was raised at where I was from and uh, it was made by a company called CF manufacturing and the C stands for cluster and I won't say what the rest stands for but uh, so you know the tag was made to cover the weight ratings and this is uh, one full sheet 20 foot by uh, 8 foot 3 sixteenths and I bought this as one sheet because it was about $150 more to buy this as one sheet than it would be to buy it as separate sheets. But I, when you figure up all the welding you have to do, and then you got seams, and you're better off just buying a full sheet. So I bought this as a full sheet. Uh, the bed, I didn't have a lot of money in. I, the cylinders were all used. The controls were used. I, I have put a new set on it since I built it. But, but I, you know, my point I'm getting to is... is don't allow the fact that you don't have something to stop you from doing what you want to do. And whether, uh, you know, it's something like this that I've been wanting to do for, I've moved this engine, you know, a hundred times in my mind over the last 25 years. Uh, you know, moving it to me was nothing but uh, just go do it. It was not even a, you know, a big, big job. You know, I know people thought that it was going to be something that was, hard to do but you know it's really nothing to this and uh and it's the way it is with most things i mean there's no piece here that weighs more than you know some of the trucks i pick up and recover and stuff like that so it's not a you know it just wasn't a it wasn't really a big issue and uh but you know the main thing is is don't let don't let your you know your environment stop you from doing something and uh i think that's why i left west virginia because the environment wasn't the, the best in the world there so uh, anyway, we're going to get over and we're going to get the steam pump out of there or the feed pump and see if we can get it loaded up. And uh, we're going to take the homemade roll back and see if we can uh, get her up there. And, uh, you know, a lot of people said something about the suspension on that truck. Why, you know, when I was picking the engine up and I set it down on one side and it leaned, I've got air ride on it. And, you know, all of the U-Haul trucks back then had air ride and it would drop the back of the bed six inches when you was loading the boxes up for u-haul so when you set that on the bed you know it's going to lean and then it's got a leveler on it that's going to self-level and it's going to bring itself back upright it just had to add air when you're doing it quick like that with a wrecker adding weight taking weight off like that it don't uh you know it, it moves a lot so anyway that's why you was seeing that and oh another thing uh somebody had said something about the uh, the fact that this has got hex nuts and it's got some square, so they're mix matched. But for anybody that thinks that they didn't have hex nuts in 1895, if you will go look at some close-up pictures of some of the stuff that it was that was in, uh, see, there's hex and square. If you go look at some of the pictures from uh, Civil War, you'll see some of the. The equipment, the, the even the, the old cannons and stuff that is mix match. You know they've got hex and square. So I do know that you know 1865 and I think 1862 is the earliest that I had seen that they had hex nuts or hex bolts. So it's not anything that wasn't available. And there's a good chance that Bates may have made all their own bolts and nuts anyway. So uh, the good thing about this so far is everything is pretty pretty much uh, standard on it you know the nuts are either you know inch inch and a quarter inch and a half two inch there's not much in between stuff there's no oddball stuff uh, there you know there's probably some nine sixteenths bolts on here most of them are three quarter and five eighths but 
you know, 9 16 was pretty popular back then. But anyway, I will uh, get my butt over and quit running my mouth. All right. All right, folks, just got back off of uh, a late evening uh, adventure here. And, you know, I told everybody, or I mentioned something about there being three locations. First, where the steam engine was, and second was where the flywheels and crankshaft were. Third location was at another place, completely different. And this is what we found in the uh, a barn there. So this is our flywheel bolts. I didn't realize that they're not bolts. They're actually studs with nuts on each end, which was what we was going to end up building. But we've got them now. We've got all four. There's another one down here. And let me see. I think we've got all the nuts. Let me see. Might be missing a nut here. One, two, three. Yeah. I think we're missing one nut. Well, that ain't good, but that may be just part of the deal, you know? Yeah, I'm only counting three nuts. Right there. And there's one on that stud, one on that stud, one on that stud, yeah. So we're missing one nut. Uh, we can live with. Uh, I don't know what some of this other stuff was. I think a lot of it was just stuff I didn't go to. Uh, this is some sort of the linkage. I don't know. I did see these, which I know these go in that the wrist plate. There's two of these in here, which is a good thing. Uh, I don't know if, uh, I don't know where this one went. But either way, we've got it all. All these are the short bolts for the outside of the flywheel. So this should be two inch uh, by four and a half thread. So four and a half threads per inch. And like I said, we'll just have to get one nut and that makes things a whole lot nicer. So all this stuff I had to be cleaned up sandblasted. But had been sitting in a in this crate in a barn for a long time. So I don't know, we're slowly getting it together. Uh, that looks like an end off of a off of the part of the linkage. So yeah, this must have been stuff that was laying in there in the, the building and they just grabbed it. Uh, drip boiler, part of one. That would have been a glass like a Lukenheimer or something. This is a grease cup. This would have had a cap on top to tighten down to push grease in. So anyway, I'm glad to get what we can get, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep at it. There's another piece that goes on top of the engine, and the governor actually uh, goes uh, on top of it, and it was on it in the pictures. And where this stuff comes from, or came from. That guy claims that he has got that piece, and he's trying to find it. So hopefully we'll be able to get it too, and uh, it's going to help out a whole lot. And, you know, the linkage and stuff, it wouldn't be an issue to build. Uh, I've got a friend that's got a couple governors. Also, we found possibly a Bates governor and maybe even a Bates tag. And uh, also, we found out that the company that made the steam pump, which is uh, Courtney Smith, uh, or not made a steam pump, I'm sorry, Worthington made it, but the company that sold it uh, also sold Bates uh, steam engines. So I found a 1905 catalog hardback of the that company, that Courtney Smith. So I went ahead and I bought it. So we're going to see what's in it. Maybe there'll be an advertisement for our engine inside of it. We'll see. So, uh, Anyway, here's uh, what we got. I'm, I'm glad to get what we got. I mean, I can't, uh, can't complain a bit, so, all right.